Okay, so what is the power alley? Well, basically, it's something you've probably heard before or you've mixed around but wasn't too sure. Basically, the power alley is a huge amount of bass energy that comes from the bass speakers. And when the bass speakers are spread across, like on a stage, right down an imaginary middle line between those bass speakers out toward the audience from the stage, there is a lot of bass. You've probably mixed right in the middle of a uh, couple of speakers before, and you probably felt a lot of bass. Probably what you're feeling was what's called the power alley. And it's basically due to frequency cancellations and frequency summing that makes this huge amount of bass very prominent right down the middle of the audience area. And the further apart the subwoofers are, the more prominent the power alley is, basically up, up to a point. And the one thing to know is that power alley is dependent upon the bass frequencies. So depending upon what bass frequency you are and how far apart the bass speakers are, you could get a really strong power alley or you could get something that's sort of weak. But anyway, it's either power alley, it can be wide or narrow. So let's take a look at it like this. Here's the stage and we've got the mids and highs. Here's your subs and let's just say this stage is 35 feet apart. Now the power alley basically is within the 20 hertz to up to 120 hertz range. Uh, that's a good decent bass range and the width of the alley is dependent on the frequency and the distance the speakers are, are between themselves. Now obviously the power alley is not always consistent down the middle as the bass speakers produce different frequencies, subwoofer frequencies that is, the power alley can either be wide or narrow. And power alley is sort of um, part of comb filtering. Comb filtering is usually, uh, usually involves the upper frequency range, mids and high frequency range, but there is some comb filtering that's going on on the lower frequency range and part of that comb filtering is what's known as the power alley. And basically it's a result of physics uh, there's not too much you can do to manage it uh, if you do have it, uh, but what you can do is try to minimize the alley or try to do away with it completely. So let's take a look at an example of the power alley and we're going to use 50 hertz as our example. Uh, 50 hertz is a good base, uh, 60 hertz, 70 hertz, that's all pretty good, but it sort of gets really more of on the higher end. So the kind of bass that you really feel that's strong, powerful kind of bass is usually around the 50 hertz range. So we're going to use that as an example. So let's say we've got a stage that is 35 feet apart and we've got our subs sitting on top of the stage. Um, a lot of people do keep the subs on top of the stage, uh, but hopefully what we're going to show here is that if you can get them down to the floor, uh, you'll have a lot better control over uh, the power alley and really over the whole dispersion of bass. So there's front of house, and as the bass signals, uh, the bass, as the sound, pardon me, as the sound is coming from the bass speakers from both sides, what they do is they'll converge in the middle. So there's going to be some frequency cancellations, uh, that, but there's also going to be some uh, frequency summation, and it's a summation right down the middle that's what's going to give you the power alley. So... In our example here, and this is all just sort of uh, very generalized, but at 35 feet apart, you're going to have a power alley that may look something like this, you know, at 50 hertz. Now notice where the front house is. So if you're mixing front house, you're going to have a preponderance of 50 hertz. That's always coming. Anytime 50 hertz comes out, you're going to get hit with it. And this is where the problem is, because if you're mixing front house and you've got a preponderance of 50 hertz, you may think, oh, I need, to, I need to EQ that out of there. Well, EQing it is really not going to fix the problem. It's going to fix the problem where you are, but it's not going to fix the problem for everything else around. Because with a narrow, a, a narrow power alley like this, people on the left and right hand side, they aren't going to be hearing or even feeling most of the bass. But then the further outside you go, and I didn't draw it on here, but the further outside that you go, uh, to the sides of the left and right out of the audience area, they're going to start feeling some of the bass. So an EQing is not going to fix this problem. So what are we going to do? 
So at 50 hertz, let's say that we move the subs down to the floor. And when we move them to the floor, we have more control over where we can push them, either to the left or to the right. So in this example, we've got them set at 25 feet now. And we've got our, we've got our sound coming out of the subs. We see our frequencies there. Now, what's going to happen here is this power alley is going to be reduced. And when I mean reduced, we're not doing away with it. What we're going to do is we're going to make the power alley wider. So by pushing the subs closer, we're going to allow the sub frequencies to, to uh, propagate and more summation to take place to allow a broader area for the 50 hertz to be felt and heard. So let's take this down a little bit further. Let's look at 15 feet. We've moved the subs in 15 feet, and at the same 50 hertz, our power alley is reduced even more, and the coverage is even wider. So by moving the subs closer together, it allows you more coverage for the bass. Now I know sometimes this may seem a little odd because when you move your speakers out to the far left and the far right of the stage, let's say in, in the first slide, which showed 35 feet, you're thinking that, oh, this is going to be great coverage. Not necessarily. And it's all because everything we hear revolves around the physics of how sound waves how they come out of the speakers and how they meet and how they propagate and how they cancel each other out. So, as I said, power alley is a result of physics. These things will not fix power alley issues. EQ will not fix it. Better, different consoles are not going to fix it. Turning up the bass, turning down the bass, using different subs, these are all, it, these are all great things, but these are not going to fix power alley issues. So let's take a look at this picture here. The uh, subs, as you can see, they're on the far left and the far right. Now, right about where that staircase is, we had a power alley starting about 10, 15 feet out in front of that staircase, and it, it carried on out at least a good 60, 70 feet from the stage. Now, in this example, we couldn't move the subs in toward the staircase, which is what we wanted to do because there's plantings and then the aesthetics of the house and of the area, they wanted to keep the speakers out uh, farther away from it because they didn't want it to distract from, from basically from the aesthetics of how the event was being uh, produced. So sometimes you're sort of limited by where you can put the speakers. So let's take a look at this. So advertising, yes, uh, pay attention to what the vendors, what the organizers want, because they want, sometimes they may want to hang their signs or put banners someplace, and they, do, they usually don't want people to put speakers in front of their banners. So there's usually a, a few variables involved with trying to place speakers, uh, but to minimize the alley, get the alley as wide as possible, meaning don't put the speakers far, too far left and right, move them in closer. And then center clustering. When you get them in to the center like that, there is a term called center clustering. And, and a lot of people say, hey, you need to center cluster your subs. Well, this is pretty much what they're talking about. Now, what I would recommend not doing is moving your subs touching each other in the center. I would not recommend that because I don't think you're going to get your full benefit of what the subs can do. And basically it goes back to when the sound waves come out of the speakers, there's a lot of frequency cancellations and there's a lot of summations. So I don't think you really get the kind of coverage you're, you think you are by running them close together, touching each other. Uh, I mean, the coverage is okay, but I think if by moving them apart, it's going to allow for a better propagation to take place. But obviously, if you have more subs, spread them out over the width of the stage. And this may be something you'd have to listen to to figure out what's going to work for you. So, <clears throat> minimizing the power alley. Right here in this picture, we've got the subs moved in closer together. These subs are probably 12 feet apart on center. And what this did was this greatly reduces the power alley. I said this is around the 50, 55 hertz range. Front of house in this particular event, we were at about 90 feet. Uh, we could easily, easily hear and easily feel the bass coming from the bass guitar and kick drum. So let's take a look at this. Here, here's another one. We've got the subs center clustered. I, I don't want to use the word cluster, but we've got them centered. Uh, once again, they're probably about maybe 12 to 15 feet apart on center. 
uh, which was perfect. The sub the uh, sub frequencies, the bass easily carried up the hill uh, for this event. And let's see here. Now this is um this is sort of a um, some people don't like doing this, but in this particular event we used only one sub. We put this one sub in the center. And when you do that, when you put a sub in the center, basically you have no power alley because you don't have another sub fighting with the other one. And this goes back to what I said before about some people think that if you add more subs, you're going to get more bass. That may be true for certain events, but certainly not for everything. And if you've got subs sitting left and right, you're going to have a power alley. And not all people are going to hear or feel the bass just as you are. But if you remove that second sub, only put one sub there, you don't have a power alley. So the sound coming out of the sub, like in this picture here, the sound that was coming out of that covered the entire hall. All we needed was one sub. And I know that if we were to put another sub in there, we would have had a lot of frequency cancellations and a lot of people would not, have, would not be hearing nor feeling the kind of bass that other people were feeling and hearing. Then in this particular setup, we just had two powered tops to handle the mids and highs. We kept the one single sub in the center. We fed the single sub 1600 watts and it easily covered 300 probably 350 people. So don't don't look at it like, well, I need to put a single sub here. It may look like you're underpowered, but actually you're, you're not. So in minimizing the power alley, you want to move your subs to the center as space allows for it. Uh, once again, if you put your subs on the stage, uh, try them off the stage. Put them down on the ground, then you'll be able to have some room to move them, uh, you know, closer together or maybe further apart if you've got them too close together. But if the subs are on the stage, you won't be able to move your subs uh, too much into the center because they may be distracting. And as well, keeping the subs on the stage introduces a lot of sub frequencies uh, into the microphones just because the stage is vibrating. So use one sub if possible. Of course, depending upon the room, number of guests that you have, and two subs can cause issues due to the frequency cancellations. So. In short, this is just a brief overview of the Power Alley. I highly recommend you searching for this topic on the internet. There's, this is just a brief overview of what a Power Alley is. And as I said, I highly recommend you search the internet for other information on it. There's some great information. There's a lot of great photos. There's a lot of rendering software that's out there that helps you determine uh, what the optimal frequency is, maybe for your subs, for your type of event. And as always, thanks for watching.